Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the channel for another interview. An interview for a show that I am deeply obsessed with. I have the showrunner of Human Resources with me right now, Kelly Galuska. Hello. Oh, my God. Congratulations. <laughs> I don't know why I had any doubt in my mind after seeing so many seasons done so well with Big Mouth, but I don't know. Human Resources just like above and beyond exceeded my expectations. Oh, I'm so happy to hear that. I'm so glad that you like it and that people are receiving it the way we were hoping that they would. <laughs> it's very, very, very smart. I love both shows, how you let us have our fun, but there's some real insightful material in the mix there. We try to, we try to put in some vegetables with all the sweet stuff. <laughs> Job very well done giving me a balanced meal. Yes. All right. So to start here, I wanted to learn a little bit more about your career path because, you know, in general, I feel like producing in any capacity could mean a million different things. And for you going through Big Mouth and hitting human resources, you've had so many different titles, a uh, co-producer, producer, supervising producer, co-executive producer. I don't know if there's any like normal like path to becoming a showrunner, but why was that particular path the right one for you? Absolutely. So, I mean, I started from the bot the bottom, quote unquote. I was um, I started as an assistant on TV shows, and so I really just like I I went I guess a more traditional path than some people do, and so I just worked on a bunch of shows. I got my first staff job, and then got lucky that BoJack and Big Mouth both went for so many seasons because I got to grow in those shows, and my level just I kept rising the ranks, as as you say. Um, so I. I as you get to be a higher level and become a producer level, you have more responsibilities, but at the same time, you're still in the writer's room, you know, down on the ground writing scripts with everybody else, with everyone else, which is great. So is it fair to look at that list that I just rattled off and think it's like, like a, like a step up every single time, or is it like a step to the side and a different type of role in any respect? I mean, it, it depends on, on which roles, but really it's kind of, I've heard it described this way, so I will copy this from whoever I got it from. Um, but it's sort of like ranks in the army. So like with each year you're on a show, generally, especially if you do well, you raise in the ranks. So your title changes and you get more responsibility as you go. All right. Well, you have hit the showrunner point and Human Resources is very lucky to have you in that capacity. Yeah. Can we look back at day one of, I guess, the inception of the idea? Can you tell us what the biggest difference is between what you pictured day one for this show and what we wind up with in the final product? Oh, that's a great question. Um, I think I think day one, I mean, we knew when we started the writer's room that we were doing episode one about birth. And we knew that we wanted, to, or I, I felt very strongly I wanted to do death as well, because we're kind of showing the breadth of human experience from the moment you're born till the moment you're gone, you've got these creatures helping you through life and sort of like aiding you in this difficult thing called humanity. Um, so I think the thing that I, I don't know, that I didn't know that we would do is that we could pack so much emotional punch into these 10 episodes and the way that we would kind of use our human stories by, you know, starting with Yara, the, the grandmother with Alzheimer's and then meeting different members of her family and then just having that come together that way. We kind of found the way that we would do the human stories as we went. And I feel very proud of how we landed on that one. Everything is very powerful. Episode nine just like ruined me for a couple of hours. Like I needed a minute to to process and recollect myself. It is quite, I mean, as a person who was has watched it a million times because you ha you you go through so many iterations, I can't not cry. I mean, I look at the pages of that and I still cry. It's really... I mean, it's a testament to Victor Kinaj's writing of that episode and our whole staff who kind of gave gave of themselves and their own experience with this stuff and let us use it, you know? So incredibly well done. Thank all right, you. let's get into to the monsters of it all. In particular, can you tell me a little bit about centering a show this time around on the monsters versus the humans? Because, you know, by focusing on human characters, you get this opportunity to basically have, you know, guaranteed layers and a whole bunch of different influences in their lives. But the monsters are essentially supposed to have tunnel vision. So what was it like upholding that, but also making sure that the monsters have meaningful arcs too? 
Absolutely. I mean, for for our ship, for human resources, it really the conception of the idea, which which really began with the other big mouth creators, Mark Levin, Jennifer Flackett, Nick Kroll, and Andrew Goldberg, was oh my God, it was so fun to go behind the scenes and go to human resources where these creatures work. It would be so fun to do like a workplace comedy with them. So it started with that. And then we realized that in doing that, we could expand this universe with the humans because the humans in Big Mouth are all one age, which is a very potent age and a wonderful age to explore because of the like tumult that comes with being a, a preteen and a teenager. But being able to do this with adults means we could expand the number of emotions, expand the number of human, you know, experience, because there's such an age range that we can deal with, which was so fun. And it also allowed us to treat the creatures as humans in a way, because we had to think beyond just the emotion that their job is, you know, they're all sort of well-rounded, even if they start from a place of horniness or love or logic. Did you guys ever discuss Pixar's Inside Out? It, I just bring it up because I keep comparing this. I keep saying it's basically the R-rated version of Inside Out. And Inside Out has completely changed the way that I process my own emotions. And now this show is kind of doing it through these creatures. 100%. I mean, you can't, you can't make this show and not think about Inside Out because Inside Out did such a beautiful job of doing what we're doing. It's just, again, like that, that movie's you know, spans age range, uh, who it's for, but this, this show is obviously not for kids. Um, but it was nice to kind of, you know, see how well that was done and do our best to expand upon it. It's age appropriate for someone. It's the best double feature ever. Um, <laughs> this is like kind of a personal question, so you could pass on this, but I keep obsessing over it. I thought about it with Inside Out. Now I keep thinking about it uh, with human resources. But have you given much thought to who your primary creature is? The one in your mind that, you know, takes the lead and is the more dominant force of the group? Yeah, totally. And I, I do think my, my dominant creature probably changes from time to time. But I think ultimately... I'm probably mostly love bug. Like I, I feel like I'm, I'm, I was Emmy and I'm like hoping to become a Sonia. <laughs> I'm somewhere in between them right now. I'm probably mostly love bug with some ambition gremlin in there. Um, and definitely I have a shame wizard. Um, I grew up Catholic, so I, I that guy's present. <laughs> yeah. I feel like this is going to make me sound like the most boring person, a person imaginable, but I'm definitely like a lot logic rock. When I, I saw that. that creature, pop up, I'm like, Oh, that's no, me. Yeah. That's, that's a pretty strong force in me right now. <laughs> We've got some very solid logic rocks in our room. So don't, don't knock it. It's very important. <laughs> <laughs> Makes me feel a lot better then. Of all of the, the newer monsters that we get, in in addition to the ones that you introduced through mm -hmm. Big Mouth, which was the toughest to crack or, or which, uh, which required the most, you know, reshaping in order to get it to the place you wanted it to be? Hmm. That is a great question. Um, I think grief, Keith from grief, while maybe not the hardest to crack, he ended up being to me, one of the more important ones to, to sort of come to the understanding. And again, this is Victor Kinaj through and through was a huge part of this. The understanding that grief can be both scary and comforting was a huge thing to come to, to sort of get to that thing where he can grow and grow and grow and take over in a way that is not okay until you give into him. And then he cuddles you and he, he makes you feel better and he's there for you. That was a really exciting thing to come to, I would say. Just like as you were saying that, all I could think was like, how do you accomplish that alongside a show with a scene about boxing penises? Like, I just don't understand how you can have it all. I mean, we had, luckily we had eight episodes before that to, to help us with, but it is, I mean, when we were doing that episode about Claudia um, and Sonia and their love affair and this like beautiful thing, beautiful, tragic thing, we were like, we're going to need some them something to cut the tension how about some box penis <laughs> did that particular storyline like make you completely rethink the monster human relationship not even just in human resources and what you'll eventually do in season two but also in big mouth too because that really blows the doors wide open to so many unique possibilities totally and that's actually probably a better answer for your previous question that was really hard it was really hard to like make sure that we were creating this universe where we understood the rules and we could 
we could help the audience understand the rules where suddenly this woman could see her and she shouldn't. Um, so that was very fun and difficult to play with, but I, I, think we landed the plane, I hope. <laughs> All right. So you just brought up a keyword for me. It's rules. I'm obsessed with like show Bibles and, and world building rules. So I don't know how much you really thought about this, but ha I guess, have you ever kind of like zoomed out in a respect? Because in the convention episode, you, you show us that there's different human resources for different countries. So is that the way you envision this all being structured, that there's one per country? Or is it broken down even further within that? It's broken down even further. We have talked about this a bit. So like we consider our human resources office that we are in most of the time, the tri-state office. So they're sort of a region. It's sort of like regional, kind of like the office the show. There are regional offices all over the place. And we kind of did that for our own understanding of like, okay, we need to be able to contain this in some way with our humans. So that's, that's how we did it. And that was a little bit established in Big Mouth as well. There had been little hints about working with specific areas. <laughs> and I think Andrew's the Long Islander. I'm, I'm a Long Islander as well. So being able to process all this as it takes place in that particular area of the country oh, always hits me nice and hard. Right, right. <laughs> um, do you know what all of the side and background monsters do? Because from, you know, the very opening of the show when it's explaining what human resources is to, let, I mean, really any other scene, the convention, everything. Do yeah. you know what every single one is responsible for? I wish I could tell you I did. But I, so many of them are just the genius of our artists creating these background characters. And, and I will say that often we in the writer's room get obsessed with certain characters and then they become, we give them names, we give them jobs and we give them dialogue, so. Okay, I have one specific question though. For one of them, I don't know if you have an answer to this. Okay. There's a multi-headed creature in episode nine that steps out of the elevator. Yeah. Like, what? What is that? What does it do? God, that is a gorgeous question. I wish I had an answer. We, we mostly, one of the writers came up with that bit that like, it seems like there's nine creatures in the elevator and then you pan down and you see it's just one we should think about what a good job would be for a creature with nine brains <laughs> there was a lot of them that caught my eye along the way but that one in particular um, looking looking at big mouth now are there any new creatures introduced in human resources that we could see step into the new season of big mouth that haven't been part of it before that's a great question. And I, I don't know how much I'm allowed to answer for that one, but I think that they are definitely looking, especially cause they're, you know, they're doing that one. But I think that we're definitely looking to now that this universe has been expanded using some of those, those people that we had really a fun time with in HR and bringing them over to big mouth for sure. So many possibilities. I love it. I don't know how much you'll be able to answer these next two questions either, but obviously I've got to ask you a little bit for uh, some season two teases. So First, is there anything that you didn't have enough time to do on season one that you're eager to start tapping into in season two? Yeah, I mean, there's a million, there's a million things because like this, this show allows this such a broad canvas because it deals with all of human experience. So I think something that I think about a lot in these last couple of years is like hope. Like I, I would like to dig into that because it's something that I think we all need so much of and can sometimes be in short supply. And I think it's an interesting thing to think about. Um, and I think just digging into different creatures' point of views and sort of featuring featuring different people um, where we can uh, is something that's exciting to me as well. All right. another Another version of that question now. What about in terms of, I guess, lessons learned while you were making season one? Are there any big takeaways from that experience that we'll be able to see influence how you present the material in season two? Interesting. Um, I mean, one, one thing that it took us a season to learn is that these stories have to come from the creature point of view first and foremost, because it's very easy, especially having written Big Mouth already, to think of them as coming from the human perspective, but the stars of this show are the creatures. So I think we learned quickly that what they're dealing with is as important. And then that is reflected in the humans. So we're kind of like, there are human avatars in a weird way. So that's something that I think that we will deal with more as we go to write season two, I hope. All right, I'm gonna close it out with one semi-weird question inspired right. by Inside Out, but in your head canon, 
-hmm. do animals have human resources creatures in their brains? Yes, 100%. In my head, they do. I mean, my animal, I thought she was in here. She's not. I've got a big dog who's like my number one child. And I tell her every morning and there's no way she doesn't have creatures in there. She is, she's as human as we are. She just can't speak. <laughs> there's a spinoff episode idea in there somewhere. I need to oh, see it. So much. Yes. <laughs> Makes me so greedy. You guys have given us so much, so oh. much already in a single season. Kelly, huge, huge, huge congratulations. And a thank you for this show. Again, I, I meant that Inside Out comparison. That movie was a big deal to me when it came out. And I just did not imagine having so much fun with Big Mouth and now human resources while also actually taking some like really deep ideas away from those shows to, to have and be able to process in my own day to day. So thank Please. you and congrats. Thank you so much. I so appreciate it. 